Hey guys, it's another of the uh, game haul videos, so let's get straight to it. Today I haven't been out and picked these up but Jen did. She was out and about and was passing some stores so I asked her to do me a favour and pop in. The first thing she found, this isn't one that I wanted to, to get but she saw it and uh, asked me and I thought yeah, let's have another one. Pink PlayStation 2 controller, great condition, goes with the pink station. I already got a pink controller but it's good to have two because then you've got a nice set and it all goes together so I'm really happy with this. I've been looking around for a good one for a while and for 10 quid, I mean, yeah, I'm going to have that. So, what did she pick up? Because this was what uh, she was really talking to me about. She sent me a message, uh, have we got this? And I said, no, I didn't even know it existed. But it's a 505 Game Street game, which, of course, a lot of people are looking for to collect. I'm personally going for the full set rather than just a special thing. But I understand why a lot of people go for this, because 505 are really good. So it's uh, play-wise poker and casino. Don't know a huge amount about this, apart from it is a poker and casino game, so it should be interesting. But what really annoys me is this. This label must remain affixed as proof of supply from Gemma Records. Never, never put a sticker on a CD or a DVD of any kind of disc. It unbalances the disc. It potentially damages the drive and you ruin by branding someone else's property. When you sell it, it's someone else's property. Never try and claim, oh, this must remain attached. No, it doesn't. The only reason anyone would do that is so that they can try and pay you less if you trade it back in. Because they can say, oh, well, it's not second hand, it's third hand, or anything like that. I hate stores like that. I actually won't buy from them. They could have the one game I was still waiting to get for, to complete a collection, and I wouldn't buy from them. Because they brand stuff. It's not your property if you're selling it. It's not going to be yours, so don't brand it. Don't try and make it yours. You're just a handler for, for a transaction. It's not right. Let's move on. <laughs> try and get back into uh, a more positive spin. Dragon Ball Z Infinite World. The final one, I think, of the Dragon Ball Z games that I didn't have. I hope it is, anyway. So, really, really nice condition. And everything's here. Late, uh, late edition case, because this came out in... 2008, so it's the start of the late edition cases. I'm very happy to add that to the set. I think it'll be a lot of fun to play. Next up we have Ford Street Racing. I thought I had all the Ford Racing games, but it turns out that there was another one, at least one more. Again, great condition and everything here. I'm very happy to have this. So, what year is this? 2006, yeah. Middle of the range, so I'm looking, quite happy to have that. Another one that was uh, a shock, because I thought I had all of the Disney stuff, but apparently I didn't. Kim Possible. Disney's Kim Possible. What's the Switch? Really nice condition again. This looks like an interesting game. The graphic uh, screenshots look quite interesting, so I'm looking forward to giving it a try. And everything is here, so I am really happy with this. That's a decent sized manual for the time as well. So I'm very happy to add that to the collection. So we have one more. And the moment I saw this on the list of things that were in CEX in Bury, which is where Jen was, I said to her, I know it's expensive, but grab it for me. And we'll basically cut back on next month's budget because this eats into over the budget I was wanting to go for. Silent Hill Origins. Really, really nice condition. Very, very happy to have this. 2008 again. Everything is here. So good. Looks like it's hardly ever been used. Looking forward to giving it a try. But, speaking of the budget, and there's a reason I went over it, there is one big thing that I got myself as a present. Texas Instruments TI 99-4A. This is a superb machine. I had one of these for one summer because uh, my uncle had one. He bought one when it came out to learn about this new home computer thing that was going to be all the rage. He was right, it was going to be all the rage. Certainly not for this machine. This is a 
solid state drive system. You can put cassettes in. It has a cassette slot on the back just there, which is a, I believe it's a proprietary thing. It looks like, it looks like a joystick port for an Atari, but it's not. That's the joystick port. Looks like a joystick port for an Atari, but <laughs> in order to make it a proprietary thing, they switched all the pins around. So you need a converter if you want to use an Atari joystick, and you will want to use an Atari joystick because the ones that came with it, and most of the ones that came for the as third-party options for the Texas Instruments are not great. The TI-99 was, the TI-99-4, sorry, was the first 16-bit home computer. This is an upgraded version of the, the, of the TI-99-4, which is why it's the 4A. It adds lowercase letters. I think it expands the basic a little bit, and it does a few tweaks like that. It's a really, really good system. I loved it when I had one as a kid for the brief time that I had it, and I'm really, really happy to finally have one back in my ownership so that we can add it to the museum, which is still going ahead, and I want to show you the other stuff that came with it. So, it's a big box here. This is all the extras that came with it. It's a huge amount of stuff. So, let's get straight into it. First of all, a load of manuals for games. Which kind of gives away what games there are, but the manuals for the Texas Instruments are interesting because they're a lot bigger than you would expect. These things are like booklet size, A5. Got some instructions and all sorts. It's actually really comprehensive what you get with them. We've got one, two, three, four, five manuals. Really nice condition. Most of them are like, as if they've not been read. And I can't uh, blame them for not reading them. Most of these games, because it's old arcade style stuff, you don't really need to get into that much depth on them, you know? So let's put that aside. We have Dragon Combat. This is not a uh, cartridge game. This is a cassette game. So they came in these... Uh, plastic uh, cases. The Amstrad had some that came in this style of case and the game itself is in a standard cassette case inside this plastic case. Just gives it a little bit of extra value I suppose in some people's eyes. A cassette, a C10 with some saves on it. Not for that game though. Toy W1 Data. Toy with prompts. I don't know what that is. I don't have a cassette drive to attach to this yet. I'm going to have to check online to see whether the one that Chinivision in a recent uh, extra video recommended. Something like 15 quid from Asda or something like that. So I'm going to see about that. But it's all everything's sealed in these packets. I just, I've had a really good uh, deal with this one. I've been watching Texas Instruments on on eBay for about a year now, and then this one came up at a decent price with all of this stuff, so I, that, that's the one. That's the one we're having for the museum. Sengoku Jidai. I don't know what this is, but from the uh, picture on here, it looks like it's a martial arts game. So that's an oddity because it's a game with a booklet that's far bigger than the cassette, and it's not in one of these plastic things, which have instructions, I don't know why. It's just odd. So who knows? This is the size that compares to that, so whether there are different types of cassette case, I don't know. When I had the Texas Instruments back in uh, the late 80s, early 90s, I can't remember which, I didn't have any games or programs for it. Now, I was talking about the Atari joysticks and why you'd want a converter, because this is not a, you know, an original Texas Instruments joystick. It's an Altai third-party joystick, still in the box. I've got two of them, so I was very happy with that. But this is really mushy. Can you hear that? It hardly moves. It's really it's mushy as all hell, but it's got three different joystick buttons. It's great. They, they all seem to do the same thing, but it's great to use. I'm really enjoying playing some of the games with this. Put it back in the box now. I think the other one's the same in terms of mushiness. I have a feeling that they're all not great. I have a feeling this is also the favourite one because it's got a little sticker on it. 
Yeah. It's just as mushy. I, I don't get it. But uh, yeah, it has the same sort of feeling as... Uh, if you've ever tried an Antari uh, 5800, that kind of mushiness, that kind of lack of responsiveness, that's what uh, this is. So, let's look at the games, because uh, it's got a massive power supply, by the way, and a modulator for the TV that I need to fix, which is why when I show you the examples from this stuff, it's not going to look great. It's going to look black and white and there won't be any sound because the modulator is damaged. I know how to fix it. It needs some resoldering on uh, some of the connections to the back of the computer, just in the plug. It just needs a few little bits, but my soldering iron is broken at the moment, so I need to get a new tip. And as a result, when I get the footage from this, it's all going to be in black and white. But never mind. Back in the early 80s, most people would have been using it on a black and white uh, little TV anyway, unless you're really posh. So we won't go too bad for that. First of all, we have... These are the uh, things, by the way. Cartridges are an odd proprietary design. It's weird but they just shove into the computer and it connects really firmly and they work perfectly first time. So I'm really happy with this. But it's a TI Invaders, Space Invaders game. Love this, it's great fun. Now we've got Micro Surgeon, which is odd. I don't know what I'm doing with this. So yeah, it's just one of those things. Next up we have Hangman, which is decent, really nice. Uh, had a bit of fun playing that. I'm easily pleased, I know. Then we have Alpina, which anyone who knows the TI will know about Alpina. Really fun game. I need to get a speech synthesizer module, by the way, to stick it on the side. All the expansions for the TI are on the side of the machine. And as a result, you can end up filling a desk with it very easily. And it causes connection problems and uh, other issues because everything's connected via serial. So, yeah, things slow down. But if you get the speech synthesizer, a lot of these games start to talk to you. And that's great. I want to see how Alpina works with that because it tells you that rock's falling. It's a warning. So I need to get that. But we'll keep going. That one I'll leave till last because I think everyone will be happy to see that. Uh, we have Termul Terminal Emulator 2. No idea what this is. I'm going to have to look it up because when I plugged it in, it gave me uh, a lot of options. And I had no idea what they were or what, the, what to do with them. This is a fun one. TI Extended Basic. It adds uh, an extra... What it's an extra processor or extra things to process quickly or something like that. It extends the basic and enhances the machine. So that's really useful to get if you ha want to have a Texas Instruments. Touch Typing Tutor. Decent enough. Then we have uh, Tombstone City, which is a weird arcade game. You have to try and uh, stop, I believe it's uh, schooners and uh, pirates and things like that, in order to try and build a Wild West city by getting the population to stay. <laughs> it's an oddity. I had fun playing it though. Then it's Munchman, which is basically Pac-Man, only not. It's not like Pac-Man in terms of you have to eat the, the dots, you lay down tracks or something like that. It's, it's pretty cool. I enjoyed playing it. Personal real estate is kind of a real estate management system. I'm assuming that the person who had this uh, in the 80s was a landlord. Not much use to me now. Physical fitness. Didn't try this one. We'll have to have a talk about it when I give it a try for this video. Football. Another one I didn't try, but I'll, I'll have a go at it and see what it is, and then we'll have a report on this video. Early reading. This is an indicator that uh, the Texas Instruments, by the way, wasn't like your normal system. It wasn't... <sighs> It wasn't trying to be an all-rounder in the same way that other systems were. It wasn't trying to compete with the Commodore 64 or anything like that. It was going for the educational market in schools as well as uh, home use, which is kind of what the uh, BBC did and, to a certain extent, the Spectrum tried it first. <laughs> Only in American schools, which is where the TI was really trying to hit home, the Apple II was already there and already better, so... Even though the Texas Instruments was 16 bits and looks cool and is great, the Apple II beat it off. So it's one of those things. But as a result, it's like 100 pieces of uh, cartridge software for the TI and most of them are educational titles. Trying to get in on the educational market. So we have stuff like uh, early reading. 
fair enough. And then we also have beginning grammar, same reason, the educational stuff. And then a lot of people who know the Texas Instruments are now crying out for one particular game. Like, do you have this? Do you have this? Well, I'm happy to say, yes, I do have Parsec. It's a side-scrolling shooter. It's really quite good. I enjoyed that. And when I plugged this in, it was one of the first things I plugged in because I, I really wanted to play what everyone says is pretty much the best game on the Texas Instruments. So I plugged it in and yeah, it really is a very good game. I had a lot of fun with it and we'll be doing a Game Hammer one shot properly on it the moment that I get the modulator fixed so we can get decent colour and sound out of it. But that's the Texas Instruments. There's only one other thing I want to talk about and that is this. A load of cables and this. Not sure what this is. I think this is for the terminal thing, but I'm not entirely sure. This, however, is the, uh, I believe it's a serial interface for the cassette deck. So we've got everything we need here for plugging this into a cassette system. So at, one point, at some point in the future, when I've got a cassette drive, we'll be able to play this Dragon Combat and that uh, Senjuku or whatever it was. What, what was that name? It's there anyway. <sighs> Sengoku Jidai. At some point we'll be able to try them out too. So I'm really, really happy with this. And the only other thing is we were given at the same time as everything else. I'm throwing everything away now. The box is just ungainly. Texas Instruments Limited uh, Information Package. So a bit of info there. And uh, practical things to do with your computer. So that's a nice little extra thrown in. So I'm really happy with this. <laughs> I've wanted to test instruments in the collection because it is a fundamental thing. You have to have one of these in a museum because it is the first 16-bit home computer. So it has to be in the museum. And I think I've got, and I think you'll agree that I've got a really decent package here. We basically have the exhibit for Texas Instruments now. Anything else that we add is a bonus. So I'm looking forward to putting that into the museum when we do it. Years off yet, I know that, but we're getting there. The exhibits are coming together. Right, that's all I've got time for, so thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you later.